Gals, it's Daniela at California Carnivores and today we're going to talk about winter dormancy in your temperate plants. So the temperate plants are plants that experience a cold winter naturally in nature and you need to mimic that for them in your home environment because they really, really need it. Just like bears go hibernate in the winter, plants need to go dormant for the winter if that's what they would normally do. So I've got a nice selection of the plants that go dormant in front of me. Uh, all of the Saracenia are going to need to go dormant the Venus flytraps, the temperate Drosera, and even the Darlingtonia. All of these plants should experience winter dormancy and it's gonna look a little di different for each of these plants. And that's why I thought we'd show you kind of what it looks like. And then we'll talk about how you provide that winter dormancy. So you can see that they all look just a little bit rough. Um, some of them look better than others, but this is totally normal. Don't freak out if this is what your plant looks like in September, October, and as we get later in the year, things are gonna die back even more. So. When plants are exposed to the shorter photo periods of the winter sun, that triggers them to start to go dormant. And they seem to know no matter where you grow them. If you grow them on a windowsill or even under lights, they somehow always know. And that's why you know it's really, really important to give them that dormancy because the plants want that dormancy. Don't skip dormancy, it's not good for the plants. So let's talk about what dormancy is and what your plants will look like and how long it is. So it's gonna vary a little bit region to region, but roughly we bookend it by Halloween to Valentine's Day as our dormant period for our plants. During that time, you're gonna see like this Saracenia oreophila has started to die back really hard. Um, the pictures are all gonna turn brown. They're gonna die back to the rhizome in the soil. And you can actually cut these pictures off as they go brown. But different species go dormant at different parts of the year, some earlier than others. So the Oreophila and the Flava tend to go dormant sooner, but plants like the Leucophyllas, they go dormant much later in the year. So these actually send up their best pictures this time of year. So I like to layer them in. I like to have Oreos and Flavas and Lukes because then I get to experience the full range of pictures for the, for the widest range of the year because Flavas and Oreos go dormant the first, but they also come up really early. So that's what's kind of fun about that. Your Venus flytraps are going to start looking really different. They're going to have a lot of um, these upright, very tall traps that they grow always are their summer traps. And so these are going to turn black and start to die back. And for the winter, the plant's generally going to die back pretty hard to the rhizome in the soil. And it's going to produce a lower rosette of traps that just aren't as tall and not as big. And then when spring comes, it's also going to still have a pretty low rosette. It's not until summer that it's going to set up those big tall traps that you love, love, love. So don't worry if you're seeing more and more black traps on your Venus flytrap, it's just starting to go dormant and that's totally normal. Then when we look at the Drosera, that's kind of a big range. So as you can see on these guys, this is the hibernacula. This is what this plant dies back to. It's like a little dormant bud. And this is a really good example. We brought this out for you guys specifically because you'll never see a better example of them than this big pot. Other plants like Hybrida, Intermedia, and all of the Filiformis, these guys all go dormant actually kind of earlier in the year. Um, you'll notice that they die back. Sometimes plants like the Oreophila, the Saracenia Oreophila, and some of these Drosera will die back actually after a heat wave. That will kind of knock them back, and that's when they'll start going dormant. So don't panic, that's totally normal. But all of these plants, this is their natural cycle. So you have to just remember, you can't push plants too hard. They're gonna do what they need to do and what they want to do. And we can't really like force them to do what we want all the time. So if your plant starts to die back, you'll see like this is another great example of a hibernacula really far in the soil. So sometimes people email me and they're really nervous about their plant. They really are scared about the filiformis. So as long as this is firm and healthy, you're good. You're good to go. So that's how you can kind of check. I'll just give it a gentle nudge. You can feel it's all, it's all tight and firm in there. And that plant is totally healthy and just ready for winter. Now a plant like a Darlingtonia is going to have a totally different dormancy period actually because these grow um, in extreme northern California and southern Oregon where they actually get snowfall on them and so they actually have snow on them pretty late into the year so they don't actually send up their pictures until much later they actually don't have their first flowers first new spring pictures until April or even May and oftentimes the old pictures will just be flattened by the snow so those will just come back up after the snow melts so their old pictures don't necessarily die back the same way so you might not see as much of a dieback of the pictures and you also just might not see those new pictures grow until much later in the year but that doesn't mean that they don't enjoy a dormancy need a dormancy and do go dormant darling too many are just a slightly different version of that winter dormancy so that kind of shows you the variation of what your plants will look like but let's talk about dormancy and how you're going to mimic that in your area. So I try to break it down by temperature because that seems to be the easiest way for people to navigate it. 
So if you live in an area that's kind of tropical and warm and your nighttime temperatures of winter never really drop into the 50s, then you're gonna need to do the bare root fridge method. And there's a whole video on our website about this and we're gonna make a whole nother one next week where we show you how to bare root a plant. But basically, you're gonna take your plant out, you're gonna bare root it, wrap the roots in a little bit of damp sphagnum moss, put it in a Ziploc bag and put it in your fridge for at least six weeks. You're gonna check that bag every week or two to make sure that it's still kind of damp not wet, but just like a little bit of moisture and that nothing fungal or gross is growing. But we've done that here as an experiment and it was totally beautiful. A perfect, perfect dormancy for the plant. And then we just potted it back up after six weeks and it grew beautifully. So if you live anywhere where your winter temperatures are gonna regularly drop below into the 50s and even as low as the 20s, a brief freeze, you are the lucky ones. You're, you're like us, we're in California and we leave our plants out year round. So you can leave your plants outdoors for the whole winter. Um, again, even a light freeze is gonna be fine. And your plants, you just need to make sure they still are exposed to that sun. So leave them in the full sun, make sure they're still sitting in water. Rain water is great, let the rain do that work for you. Um, and your plants are gonna do everything they wanna do all on their own and you don't have to do a thing other than keep them watered. If you live in an area that gets really cold, like it drops below 20 routinely and it's just a snowy place, you're gonna have a couple of options. You can bring your plants um, indoors into a fridge dormancy, or you can bring them indoors to a sunny, unheated room or garage with a window where there's some sun, because you need that sun to help with the shorter photo periods to trigger dormancy. So if you have that unheated room or garage with a nice window sill, you can put your plants in there, make sure they're still sitting in water. I do get people asking a lot about whether they should dry their plants out in winter. Don't dry your plants out. Let them still be in water. Um, and if you don't have that option, you could also leave them outdoors. We have a lot of people back east who leave them outdoors, but they mulch them in really heavily. I cannot emphasize this enough. Mulch them in like four plus inches of mulch on the top and the sides. The wind chill will kill your plants on the roofs. Um, and a lot of people have better luck if they actually do in-ground plastic bogs and then they mulch over that. I do have to warn you, people do experience a little bit of attrition rate when they do leave their plants out over the winter on the east coast and mulch them in, but they do do it and they do have lovely, lovely plants. So just make sure you mulch very, very well. So that's winter dormancy in carnivorous plants. And I promise we'll have a video next week that shows you specifically how to bare root a plant so you can get ready. And just remember, you don't have to start doing anything um, until October, end of October. If you're gonna have to do anything for dormancy, you have a little time. But just, you know, your plants will start to go dormant. Don't panic, it's totally normal. Some of the leaves might grow a little weird. You can see there's, you know, this is starting to die back. This one is a little brown on the tip, totally normal. Just let your plants be plants. Don't worry too much. And I hope this was really helpful. So if you have more questions, feel free to leave a comment below and I'll try to answer all of them. Thank you.